There is a couple of things that really amaze me, Stefan. The last time I looked at a 3D printed model is maybe half a year ago. So not that long, I thought. But there are some things here that, that I was surprised about. And I looked at it just before I got on stage. So for example, when you look at the structure of this auditorium, you see that up here, the screen doesn't actually have any connection downstairs. So there is nothing underneath it to hold it. And I always thought in 3D printing, you can only print up, next layer, next layer. So there has got to be something underneath. But when I look here, it's free. So how did you do that? <laughs> so uh, this is uh, what you're describing is a, a technology that's called FDM, where one layer is put upon the next layer. Um, and there are, there are different ways. They all have uh, in common, that is layer upon layer. However, in, when we do this, it's called selective laser sintering. And it's a powder-based uh, technology. So a layer of powder is put. And then a laser comes and melts the power where you want to have some uh, solid parts. And the rest stays powder. And that powder is the support for the layers above. So what you're saying is, uh, this starts printing in the air. Well, while it was printing, it was full of powder. Understand. OK, so is that sort of the next generation of 3D printing already? Or is it just for different use cases, especially if we start thinking about some companies that might be here who have heard of 3D printing and are thinking about using it, not just for prototyping, but maybe for some small production runs? Um, is it different kinds of technologies, or is this the next step? Um, for, uh, I mean, this technology has been around for years. However, what's, what is the future and what is the next step is to bring that technology into offices, into small printers that are not huge and they cost hundreds of thousands of, of euros, but you can actually buy them for a couple of thousand euros. And that's what's happening right now. So all this maker movement, it starts to, to catch other technologies. It started with these uh, things that drew layers. But now it's coming more and more also into powder-based uh, technologies. And that's exactly what you're saying. Now we're bringing this technology down to our houses and to on, on our desks. And you're so convinced that it's coming that not only did you quit your previous job, but you actually started a company two years ago. I understand you bought your first 3D printer. And you said, yes, this is it. This is the future. And you truly believe in it. And now I think you're going to tell us a bit more about why you think this is the future. Yes. Great. So glad to have you. Thank you very much. Do I have a thing to switch slides? Um, so basically, we're a spin-out from the Technical University in Berlin. Uh, when, we first, when I first started this, uh, this company, it all started with an Ultimaker 1. It, was, it is a kit of a 3D printer, and I assembled it myself. And after some time, I realized, OK, now it's working. Now, actually, I can, I can use it for, for printing. Uh, however, it was quite difficult for me to get the data and put that into the right place. And, uh, and then I decided, slow, slow and slow, I decided that we should do something about data in 3D printing. I also realized that there is great technologies, great printers out there, which can do amazing things. And I, I, I ask you all to, to come here and have a look at the detail that, that, uh, that we can print out these days. However, it's quite difficult for people to use such professional printers. And, and, and that's something we're challenging here. So um, just to give you an overview about different applications of 3D printing, I brought this slide. And it shows a little bit how you cannot just use it for colorful vases or uh, little hearts or stuff that you see in, in, in many printers, but how you can actually do business with 3D printed things, thanks to new technologies, thanks to prices dropping. So what you see here is, for example, there is a, um, on the top left, there is a fusion cell. So it's a huge machine. And the company that produces this, they, uh, they can now bring a model of that to their customers and show them, this is how it looks. We actually have different models. So which model uh, is the best for you? They can really use it to support their business. They can use it for marketing or for sales purposes, for product development purposes purposes, and so on. The next company here, Blue Biolabs, they're, uh, they're testing water. And by the, by the water test, they can say in which, which condition a dwell is. And as you see on that picture, uh, that a dwell can be dirty, it can, uh, the, the, the water level can be low. And, and they have big problems to explain that. Now, we printed that for them. 
and now they can explain it much better to people. So they really use it to explain their products. And we have more applications where, um, where companies use 3D printed things in order to explain their machines, their fair stands, their designs, architects use it. So uh, uh, what's, what's also interesting is the, the round theater. That is a theater which turns. And the people are, are, are sitting on a bench like you guys, uh, but then that bench turns and they see another uh, spot. And in order to explain and pitch their idea to different um, uh, governments, they, they had us done that, that model and they can uh, show it much better than they could do it before. So, so this is just some applications and some, some companies we're working with um, that utilize 3D printing not for prototyping, which is where it comes from, but for completely different uh, business cases. Now, this is very interesting because Gardner is doing these hype cycles. They basically say every technology goes through a hype. And the hype is telling people uh, what is cool, what's coming, and what is overrated, what will fall down into this tale of delusions, as they call it. And, and they did that cy hype cycle for 3D printing. And I'm not sure if you can read it, but on the top of it, it says consumer 3D printing. And that's going to go down. So sorry, you guys will only have 3D printers in your houses in maybe three to five years. It won't happen in the next couple of years. It will take some time. What is coming up? is new technologies for making 3D data. So 3D scanners, 3D print service bureaus, 3D uh, creation software. That is what's going to be effective very soon and what you guys will be using. Um, and, and, and we were, when we saw that, very happy because that was exactly what our company is about. So when I saw that a few months ago, I was like, okay, I'm on the right track here. So I was, I was happy to see this. However, it will take some time until we all have 3D printed car parts uh, or, or we print our own food or, or, or uh, tools or whatever at home. Um, just to give you some ideas, this is a combination of different printer materials. So the mid middle part, which is um, uh, uh, steel, we printed that from a mixture of nylon and aluminium powder. And that gives a very good uh, illusion of, uh, of metal. So, so that's the middle part. And then the outer parts is nylon, which after printing, we painted. And then we assembled it, and it gives uh, a very good replica of, of a steam turbine, uh, which now goes around the world. And Siemens doesn't have to bring the real turbine, but they can actually bring that one. Here we have uh, a, a <coughs> some um, uh, architects who are presenting their ideas, their new designs, when they get into uh, the architecture foundation, German architecture foundation, and, and, and we did this installation for them. Uh, here are some more uh, ideas what you can do with 3D printing. Even now, you can use it to, uh, for marketing purposes, you can use it for, uh, as desktop gadgets, and all these you can individualize because with a 3D printer, it's, it's easy to, to just make one piece. Uh, it, it doesn't cost uh, like one piece or 100 pieces. It's more or less the same price per piece. So individualization is, is, a, is a really cool thing you can do with 3D printing. As of when you do uh, mold production, completely different story. The price of one piece and the price of 100 pieces is completely different. So this is all different ways to, to utilize 3D printing. You can even use it for, uh, uh, for food. So there is a... There is a device where you, where you can drink coffee of it, like a, uh, a designed uh, cup. And you can put it into a dishwasher. Uh, it's food safe. You can also put uh, uh, electronics together with printed things. And it all can be individualized down to your design, down to your needs. And, and just making one of them is possible. So, so this is all uh, ideas. As I told you, uh, it all started like this. It started with this Ultimaker I made. and. Uh, and back then, I had the problem that the designs, the 3D data that were there, I could not put them into the Ultimaker. It was basically not possible to directly put 3D data in there. And that's what 3D Mind is about. It's a platform which connects the printing sources. It checks it. It analyzes it. It heals the files. It makes them printable so that later we can send them into 3D printers. And, and this is basically how it looks like now. There is a 3D print button you can have in your CAD program. When you press it, it is sending the data to, the, to a web interface. You can see different materials. You see online prices. You basically just select whatever you want to have. Uh, you can change the scale so that it, is in your, uh, that it fits your needs. And you can buy it on our web portal 
and it's being shipped down to your house. So this is something we launched on CBIT, this 3D button project where we have CAD programs for different 3D sources. So uh, right now we have 3D Studio Max, Rhino and uh, SketchUp, which is three CAD programs. But uh, we're developing around one new plugin every two weeks. So if you want to come up and tell us, I love Blender or I love AutoCAD, uh, please do so, because we're now collecting uh, votes and we will implement the next ones later on. And it gives you the, able, uh, the, the possibility to print directly from your CAD program. So you can, instead of, uh, like, all, all you guys know the 2D print button, which sends your data to a 2D printer. It does all the file transforming and so on, and you can print it out directly. Now we have that for 3D. So we have the 3D print button. And it works uh, very nicely, and you don't even have to have a printer, because you can buy it, and it's being shipped to your house. So you all can get something like this down to your house. Um, and that's just the beginning. So on the top, you see different uh, CAD programs. You see uh, the amount of people that are using this. So this is the reach that we get. Having this program, this button in one program, uh, gives us reach to millions of people. And connecting CAD program is, is just the beginning. So there is many, many more 3D printing sources which we want to implement over the time. There are, for example, 3D scanners. On the, on the left-hand side, you see a people scanner where you can go in, and in a few seconds, you can get a 3D picture of yourself, and you can print that out and have it shipped. Um, there is mobile phone applications. You take a couple of um, uh, pictures of, a, uh, of something, and it, and it makes a 3D model from this. There is Microsoft Kinect, which is a great 3D scanner. We use it already to make 3D models of people and things. Um, and, and implementing our button in there brings the, uh, a perfect 3D scanner and the ability to, to simply print things into houses. There are even computer programs. My little brother, he's making probably one huge castle per day. And that's 3D data in Minecraft. Uh, and, and we extracted that, and I printed it out for him. And instead of blowing the thing away, in the end of the day, he can have a printout on his desk, which is quite cool when he shows it to his friends. There is a 3D printing, uh, sorry, 3D data uh, basis where people are working on designs and they're sharing it and so on. It can have our print button. With one click, it can be printed out and shipped to them. So they don't even have to buy a printer. They can try it out like this. Um, we, are, we have started our journey in the 3D, in the Technical University in Berlin. There is a 3D laboratory, which uh, has been doing research for, for more than 10 years. So that was a great start. Our mentor is, is uh, very knowledgeable in 3D printing. The, uh, the Technical University, they have an incubator program, which I can really recommend. Anybody that would like to start a company, uh, try talk to them. Um, we have been on many fairs. We got a lot of feedback. We have a booth over there. Uh, please come see us. We will be in Hannover Fair and on some uh, other 3D printing fairs. So, so, so this is how we uh, how we got attention. How we made people use our products. And we've been in, uh, featured in many uh, newspapers and many uh, even in, in in TV. So it's it's such a hype theme, and we really put the tools into the hands of the people. That's why uh, it is really liked by media. Um, so with that, I would like to, to thank you. And I just want to add one little last remark. Uh, everything we're doing for customers, it's completely free. All these plugins, they're free. You can download them, install them. Doesn't cost anything extra. If you send your file to a printing service, you just pay the normal price for the printing service. Our business model is that, w that we get a little kickback from the printing service. So for every project we give them, they pay us a little fee. But for people, for users, it's all free. CAD programs love it because it is additional um, features we, put, we, we bring to them. People love it because for them it's just two clicks and not dealing with different file formats and, and, and uh, analyzing software and finding the right suppliers. It's just one click. And the printer suppliers get more uh, deals and more, uh, more, de more uh, projects, so they like it. So this is how we fit into that value chain. And I'd really like you to try it all out. Uh, you can come up to our booth. We show it to you. Uh, you can see many, many more materials, steel, and so on. And um, yeah, I'm happy 
to talk to you guys later. Thank you very much, Stefan. I think that's quite interesting that you're targeting the, the B2B side so much. And you're very clear about this is where, uh, where the, the value can really be created. And I, I think I, I agree. If I had a 3D printer at home, I'd be excited the first week, try some things, and then probably you know, either I would turn it into a business of some sort, <laughs> and then I'd be, by definition, a B2B customer, or probably the 3D printer would just sit there, right? So uh, I think that's a, that's a very interesting and probably, I would say, a true uh, outcome on, on that bet that you're taking there. Um, yeah, well, all the best for you. And uh, I think you'll still be up there tomorrow as well, right? So as you said, anyone can visit you up there. Thanks very much for coming here and showing us the model. Thanks for having me. Thank you.